Well, this is typical. I actually found a little bit of work here at the car lot that I work at in uh, good old Burien, Washington. And I work outside on cars. And yeah, it's been a perfect week. And then um, now it's raining like crazy. So I might get home and do some blogging or try to get some stuff done. You know, paint, they, they you, you would think paint and water would mix really well, but surprisingly it doesn't. Uh, let me show you one cool thing here. I hope we can see that. I got Batman earbuds and they suck, but they were $7. They actually came broken. All right, um, see you soon. Old man technology lesson number 67. <clears throat> When you're recording yourself, make sure that you're on video rather than just camera screenshot. Because last night I went out Pokemoning and I thought I recorded a bunch of stuff that's after midnight. So I thought, hey, it's a new day. It's a new vlog. But uh, yeah, it's all gone. It wasn't ever there in the first place, actually. So um, what I talked about was, let me see, Pokemon still haven't caught my shinies. Um, and I, it is pretty cool, though, because this, this event is giving you triple stardust for like everything that you get that's water related so that means if you get like a second or third evolution out in the wild of a pokemon uh you get like a thousand stardust which pretty cool they're everywhere um what else did i oh i was looking at uh yesterday's um vlog and i was i was so excited by the fact that it came to 14 minutes and 55 seconds. Remember I said 15 minutes was what I wanted to do? It was like when we used to make a mixtape, you know? And you had that one song left, but you knew it was just a little long, so you picked a song that was a little bit shorter. And sure enough, you'd watch that tape wind down, and the song would stop, and then you'd have like four seconds of actual tape that doesn't record, and then click off goes the recorder, and you're just like, I utilized every single minute of that 90 minute cassette tape yeah i missed that um okay so let's go down and look and see what's going on with the whole vlog on youtube on the page okay so it wasn't quite the uh overnight success that uh, i expected we have 12 views and we have four subscribed members and you know i know all you smart alex are out there like well you see you had nisi and river on there so there's two and another one's probably you and another one's probably your mom well i'll tell you what my mom didn't subscribe so who's the idiot now okay let's go on here this is what i thought was interesting this automatically picked my son does Facebook have an algorithm where it just goes towards better looking young people uh, to pick for their for the thumbnail? Or is it the fact that he has his thumb up? Because really, out of that 14 minutes and 55 seconds, yeah, buddy, he was only in there for like maybe seven seconds of actually his face. And it picked that. Why? Somebody tell me why. Here's an article that I also wanted to talk about today. Uh, you guys are aware of the fact that Incredibles 2 is coming out next weekend. Uh, Incredibles 1 is an amazing movie, and director Brad Bird also made one of my favorite movies of all time, The Iron Giant. <clears throat> um, somebody asked him about a sequel to The Iron Giant, and in here he he says, you know, I feel like that story is told. Um, I'm told I need to remake everything that I've made, and no one apparently wants anything new anymore. I'm a little at odds with society on that. I would like to do some new things. Uh, later on, he says, I'm not mad about it, but it seems like the, the only thing that people want me to do now is repeat what I just did. Uh, he adds, it's complimentary when fans ask about sequels, but it's a sweet thing, but it's also, from an artist standpoint, a little frustrating. Like, what if I want to do a Western? Would there be any support for that idea? What if I want to do a musical? How about that? Okay. I totally understand what he's saying here, and I agree. Um, the world is too consumed with remakes, sequels, reboots, all that stuff. Come up with an original idea. However, 
I believe this is because he doesn't have the story yet for Iron Giant, which I do. I actually made a pitch to Bradbird where I explained the entire story. I don't know how to get it to him, but I'm going to use this Facebook as a platform. So since a lot of my stuff got erased yesterday and I need to fill up some time, I'm going to give you uh, that old video of me trying to get Brad Bird to make an Iron Giant 2. Um, yeah, this it's such a great movie. It's actually, if, if you know me on my Pokemon, uh, Discord page, I'm known as Mad Mansley, which comes from Iron Giant. Another one of my monikers is Brain Cloud. And that's the contest of the day. If you can tell me what Brain Cloud is from, because it is a reference, I will send you this number one Batman annual. Now, it's not as cool as it seems because it's not actually number one. Comic books renumber all the time. This came out a couple years ago. But it does have a $4.99 price tag. It includes uh, Tom King with a story that I believe won some kind of uh, comic award. Scott Snyder, Paul Dini from the animated series, uh, Neil Adams, and this person whose name is Beetle Backwards. Uh, anyways, so this is all yours. If you can answer the question, what is Brain Cloud from? I also named a band, Mad Mansley and Brain Cloud. I get kind of obsessed with things. Anyway, so here is my pitch to Brad Bird. And I hope you enjoy. I thought maybe since this is in the news right now, maybe if people are searching for Brad Bird or Iron Giant, my YouTube video will pop up and somebody can get this to him. If anybody knows how to get this next video to him, please let me know. Okay, you're done looking at my bed and a comic book and my laptop. Um, so here's the video. Hello, Mr. Bird. Um, my name is Jared. I'm a big fan of your work, uh, especially... The Iron Giant, one of my top five favorite movies of all time. Uh, higher than Star Wars, higher than Godfather, higher than, you know, Lawrence of Arabia. Like, seriously, it's it's a very moving film uh, that says so much. And I feel like with the recent popularity of Ready Player One and just uh, the fact that everything comes back eventually, uh, a sequel is inevitable, uh, despite the fact that you said that you're not interested. I got a feeling Warner Brothers is at some point in time going to do it with or without you because, you know, business and all that. I don't know what kind of uh, relationship you have with Disney or if you are signed on with a um, contract or anything. But anyways, I just had to get this story out there. They say everybody has one story, and this is this is my story. It's uh, for a sequel. It's like if it's going to be done... You know, it needs to be done right, and nobody else better to do it but you. But I thought maybe this might be a motivation, some way to um, get you thinking about it. Um, so here's my idea. I hope you have the 10 minutes to, to just kind of get my pitch and enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> so the, the title, first of all, is The Iron Giant Returns, um, which I've never been a big fan of that title, but... It works at this time because, uh, for one, it's a callback to Superman, um, which is where the movie starts off. Last we saw the Iron Giant, uh, he was up in the Antarctic calling his pieces back to him. Um, <clears throat> this is actually 60 years later, present day, 2017. He's up there and he's built himself his own Fortress of Solitude, uh, where he takes care of animals that he's rescued uh, he's got plant life and he's, he's just created this little habitat and this world for himself and he's very content, very happy. Um, he's just the gentle giant, you know, the caretaker, everything there, all the creatures love him. Um, <clears throat> and one night he sees uh, a meteorite fall. He goes out to, um, to see what it is all about, um, to investigate and finds out that it's actually two, it's a spacecraft that has two different um, Iron Giants uh, that look almost just like him. They're upgraded a little bit, like 2.0. You can tell they've been updated, but um, he's so excited because he's like, I finally get to find out who I am, where I came from, um, what my story is. 
and uh, somehow it's communicated to him pr pretty quickly that uh, it's not good. Yes, he was made to be a weapon. Um, these uh, Iron Giants were sent out throughout the universe uh, to basically scout out different planets and see if they were ripe for the taking. Um, and they hadn't heard back from this particular Iron Giant, so you know they decided they're going to go see what, what's going on. And from reading his memory from their crossover, they realized, okay, Earth is a planet that's ripe for the taking, and we're going to do it. Um, of course, Iron Giant has problems with this. He says no, and they say, well, we're going to anyway, um, and we're going to take you out too because you're obviously a faulty uh, device. And so they decided to destroy him. Um, he guns up, you know, turns like in self-defense. He sees their guns and he, you know, and uh, calms himself back down again, just like in the first one. He says, I'm not a gun. Um, decides to run instead. And, you know, these two these two creatures that are upgraded versions of him take him out, pretty much uh, thrash him in the fight. He barely escapes alive. You know, there's uh, maybe like a cliff or something. There's always a cliff, right? Um, he saves himself. They fall to their doom. He's just barely, you know, missing limbs back to being beat up like he always seems to be. And then in this uh, <clears throat> little ode to the original short story, uh, the, the pieces find parts that they can and they kind of, you know, create a little walking, you know, maybe the hand is holding the head or something. Um, and actually grab pieces from the other robots too uh, and create this little spacecraft or starship or plane or jet or whatever maybe his foot one of his feet could that has the jet engines on it could be the jet engine of the ship so it's basically this little ship that um is made up of iron giant parts and parts new and old and it takes off so that's his intro um our other protagonist of the story is a teenage girl named Haley who is rebellious uh she fights with her mom all the time she lives at home with her mother and her grandfather uh, the dad's not in the picture. <clears throat> um, she's, uh, you know, rebellious in the ways that she's about to leave home. Um, she's out hanging out with bad people, maybe vandalizing, maybe uh, drinking, smoking, whatever you can put into a show like this. Um, and she's she's on her way out. And she's at her little hideout getting ready to leave. And lo and behold, this giant metal beast shows up. First, she's freaked out. He can speak now somewhat. Um, and so he, you know, communicates to her that he needs help. She has a uh, this really good relationship um, with her grandfather. He's kind of the middleman with her relationship with uh, her and her mom. Her mom goes to him. You know, he says, you know, I grew up without my dad in the house. And, and I had these issues and she's just a kid. And the grand... Haley will go to him and, and, you know, he'll kind of be the moral compass of the family. He's kind of holding them together at this point. Um, <clears throat> but he's also kind of this quirky, you know, uh, mechanic guy that uh, is into sci-fi and stuff. And so she knows that he will know what to do. Maybe he can help uh, put the Iron Giant back together. So she takes him back and um, she puts him in her barn, very reminiscent of the first movie. He's kind of in pieces. Um they have a conversation uh he says something about superman being all proud of being superman and she's like superman's a dork you know he's a goody goody um you know my grandpa likes superman she says this this is this is a real hero she pulls out um her comic book collection and she shows him harley quinn and she's like this is actually one of the fights that she gets in with her mom her name her name is Haley, but she um insists on being called harley um, <clears throat> and so she says, no, look at Harley Quinn. She's, she's a badass. She don't take no crap from nobody. She, uh, she's tough. She's independent. She's cool. This is, this is, you know, the new, um, hero. And this is who I want to be. And this is, um, and so obviously, uh, Iron Giant's a little bit confused by this because all he's been taught is morals and strict guidelines and codes and all that. And, he senses some apprehension in her that she's kind of like wishy-washy on which way she's going to go and she's confused and you know he says to her you are who you choose to be and then we hear a voice from the barn door <clears throat> grandpa's been there he's been listening to the conversation he says wow that's really good advice he says whoever told you that must have been a pretty smart person 
steps out of the shadows, um, Grandpa is Hogarth Hughes. And uh, Iron Giant was actually, the reason he's in this town is because he came to find Hogarth, obviously, and incidentally ran into his granddaughter instead, and they live in the same house. Um, touching moment, you know, he just, the life comes back to him, he's like a kid again, he sees his old friend, and uh, in the process of this little reunion in the in the barn, um, <clears throat> he gives his in, uh his his uh, intake. I'm trying to think of, he gives his advice on the argument they're having about Harley Quinn versus Superman. He says, "Yeah, Harley Quinn. Um, you know, she had an abusive relationship. She was bad for a while. Uh, her her problems c- kind of shaped her for a while, but she broke free of that. She became a strong person, and she does do what she needs to do sometimes. Um, you know, she doesn't hold back." Um, and so, you know, she's a different kind of independent superhero that's, you know, kind of a um, anti-hero. Um, so, in the meantime, the word got out to these other Iron Giants, and the Earth is for the taking, and yes, they come and they invade. Um, and there's like a handful of them, six or seven, that's all they really need, they feel. And Iron Giant, once again, is stuck with this moral dilemma. You know, who am I? Um it's kind of like Superman with the Kryptonians when they come down and they and they invade Earth. And Superman's like, well, this is my heritage. These are my people. But this is my new home. And what they're doing is not right. So which side do I fight on? And Iron Giant kind of does not compute, kind of shuts down a little bit, just decides that he's going to sit it out and let whatever happened happen. Because he can't decide which side he wants to uh, take. Um, until Hogarth is threatened. Um, it becomes, they, they come to Hogarth because they realize he might be a threat because they know of the history and they want to kill him. <clears throat> and at that point, you know, there's this big intense moment and Harley slash Haley's there and she says to the Iron Giant, go get him, Puddin'. And he mechs up and he turns into this war robot and he just saw us through them with his you know new powers or new new upgrades that he's got um and he ends up you know taking out six or seven of these guys saving the world um you know in the end the moral is made Haley um realizes how important because of these lessons that the iron giant taught her uh that family is important and that she can be good it's but be edgy at the same time um, and the last moment with her mom, her mom calls her Harley and she says, you know what? Haley's okay. Um, so she learns that and the Iron Giant realizes he is a hero and there are other planets out there that have been invaded possibly by his people and he feels a responsibility to go save them, um, save innocence. And so he's going to go take off and <clears throat> Hogarth. Uh, wants to go with him. He's his old friend. Um, he's in his later years, kind of like Bilbo Baggins, you know, it's like one last adventure. And Iron Giant convinces him that he needs to stay because uh, his daughter and his granddaughter need him. And once again, touching moment, Iron Giant takes off to go save worlds. And Hogarth is there with his daughter and his, um, and his granddaughter, um, holding them both side by side. And once again, the Iron Giant has saved everybody, uh, not just um, in a literal sense, but also in a figurative sense. So, man, if anybody can do this, it's you, and anybody can make it better, it's you. And I hope that you consider this, and thank you so much for giving me 12 minutes of your time. All right. Um, Be in contact or whatever. (laughs) All right. Thank you so much, Brad Bird, for... Uh, the great movies that you've given us. All right, bye-bye.